What's going on Pixel Hackers? Christian Lovelace from Pixel Feet here. And in this video, we're going to go over eight things I wish I knew before running Facebook ads. But before we get started, make sure to smash that like button, subscribe to the channel, and let's dive right in. So, right off the bat, there's one word that you're probably going to hate at some point, and that word is test or testing. Get used to testing everything that you can think of when it comes to your ads and your websites and your landing pages. You're gonna test different demographics, different interests, uh, different placements, uh, different types of creative images, videos, uh, different age brackets, all right? You have to test everything because I cannot tell you how many times I have tested, let's say, two images, and I think image A looks fantastic, it looks amazing, and it's gonna blow everything out of the water, and then image B, which is just ugly, outperforms image A by a thousand percent. So get used to testing everything and always trying to improve your results with split testing. So testing, test, test, test. Uh, next, creative. I just talked about creative. Without great creative, you are not going to be able to scale an account. Creative is one of the secrets to scaling ad accounts massively, all right? Why is that? Because for example, you can run a wide open campaign, meaning there's no targeting whatsoever, nothing. You just leave it broad, wide open. And believe it or not, Facebook takes signals from your video or your image and your creative, it scans that creative and does the targeting for you along with whatever text uh, you use in your copy. So creative is very important. You, you should always keep fresh creative coming into your ad account, especially now after iOS 14, you gotta keep it fresh. The more creative you put out, the, the, the more you're gonna be able to scale the account with different audiences or even the same audiences. So spend your time on creatives that match your audiences. Think of different uh, marketing angles, all right? different creatives for different audiences and make sure that the message matches the audience. So that's very, very important. All right, so uh, next, campaign structure. Okay, it's all about simplification nowadays when it comes to Facebook ads, but that doesn't mean that you should just be throwing stuff all over the place. You should always be following in simple, campaign structure and you should know these terms all right so let's start your campaign structure in every single account should look like this you should have your tof which is top of the funnel and i'm going to explain them uh, missing in uh mof middle of the funnel and bof you guessed it bottom off the funnel okay and what is each stage of the funnel here top of the funnel is going to be your prospect and campaigns these are people who have no idea who you are this is going to be you're introducing your brand to the world out there middle of the funnel is people that have already seen your awareness campaigns, your top of the funnel campaigns. And bottom of the funnel is people who have taken action on your site, uh, but have not pulled the trigger yet, or hasn't become a lead, or hasn't purchased anything, basically. Which brings me to my next point, okay? Your ad campaign creative should match each stage of the funnel. You should not be using the same creative for each step of the funnel. What do I mean like by that? So your creative for the top of the funnel should be a creative that introduces the brand to the world. It showcases what your mission is as a brand, what you do. Your middle of the funnel should be where the creative points out the pain of your audience and what solution you are offering to them, what your solution is to that pain, to get them to take action. And then the bottom of the funnel creative is after they already taken action. They maybe visited your site, they viewed content, they added to cart, but they did not purchase. This is when you can use reviews to say how great your products are, or you call them out for leaving something on the cart and not pur purchasing right away. So it's very important that that creative matches each stage of the funnel, and you keep it simplified and concise uh, inside your ad account. Next, this is one of the most underrated things and most looked over things that I see when it comes to media buying or running ads in general when it comes to Facebook. 
learn. Make sure you learn Google Analytics. Make sure you learn Google Analytics. Why is that? Because Google Analytics is what's gonna show you what's going on in your whole ecosystem. Believe it or not, not everything on Facebook is accurate. Your dashboard is not accurate. The data on your dashboard, is, it's not accurate at all, especially after iOS 14, after the uh, Apple update that happened uh, last year in 2021. Now in 2022, it's more important than ever than to, to learn how to navigate through Google Analytics. It's gonna show your demographics. It's gonna give you gold when it comes to your audiences. If you go in there, you can go under affinity and it will show you what people are shopping for, what they're buying, what, what, uh, what type of audiences they are. And most important out of all, it's learn how to use UTM tags. UTM tags to tag every single ad, every single ad set, because then you can go on Google Analytics and you can match everything up and see what's bringing your sales, see what's bringing your results. So if you don't know what a UTM tag, it's a tracking code that we put on every single ad that tells you where your sales are coming from. You can look at it inside the orders inside Shopify, but you can look at it inside Google Analytics and you can put two and two together and put these beautiful reports uh, of knowing what's going on. And guess what? Without Google Analytics and matching uh, analytics to your um, Facebook account, you're not gonna be able to scale properly. And if you try, I can assure you, you're going to lose money. Uh, if you don't know how to do uh, UTM tagging for your campaigns, I do have a video on that. I'll put the link in the description so you guys can watch it later, but make sure you, you take a look, okay? So that's it. Let's go on the next one. So here's the secret sauce. So you don't lose any money, you know what's going on, so you can cut the losers and scale the winners. So pay attention closely. All right, so first of all, we gotta know the terms behind these. So you got, CPC, that's cost per click. You have CTR, which is click through rate. You have CPM, which is cost per mile or cost per 1000 impressions. You can use either term. Then you have CPA, which is cost per acquisition. And then you have CVR, which is conversion rate. All right, so when running ads, you gotta follow this. If your CPCs are up, but um, your CTR is down, what do you think the issue here is? The issue here is going to be your creative. Your creative is not working. Your creative is not uh, matching your audience because if your cost per click is going up, that means your conversion rate is down. No conversion rate, click through rate, I'm sorry. Click through rate. That means your click through rate is down because people are not taking action. If people, if the creative matched your audience and people were into the creative and it was doing its job, your click through rate will be to the roof, through the roof, which will bring your cost per click down, meaning your ads and your conversions are gonna be much cheaper. So remember that, the higher your CTR is, the better your creative is. So you can always improve that. So always do a benchmark. It's like, what's my CTR right now? Okay, let's make another creative and let's see if we can get it higher because the higher you get it, your CPCs are gonna go down. Okay, next, if CPCs and CTRs, click the rates, are consistent, but CPMs are up, what do you think the issue is? That's going to be your targeting. Why is that? Because let's say you're using a broad audience and people are coming, they're clicking through, right? But you know, your CPMs are up because the targeting is not on point. Not too many people are taking action. You're, you're, you're trying to, to target a broad audience for a very, very niche down specific product. So you're getting, click, you're getting clicks and people clicking through, but they're kind of expensive and consistent. Guess what? If I niche down that audience, let's say I have a product for, I'm targeting dogs, but the product is specifically for a Frenchie and I put together just a Frenchie, Frenchie obsessed people audience. Guess what? 
my CPM, right? It's gonna be much cheaper because people are gonna be taking action. So Facebook sees that an engagement and it gives you cheaper CPMs when it puts it out there, all right? So another way to bring your CPMs down is what creating huge audiences that are niched down. The bigger the audience, it more, most likely your CPM is gonna go down, but it has to be really, really targeting. So that's where you gotta play around with your targeting and test different audience senses. And you're gonna see that your CPMs are gonna be affected depending on, on how targeted that audience is and how big it is. So the bigger the audience and the more targeted it is, the lower CPMs are you, you're going to get, okay? Because most pe more people are gonna take action. All right, and last but not least, if CPCs are down, CPMs and CTRs are consistent, but, but, and there's a big but, CPA is up, guess what your issue is? The issue is not in your ads, the issue is on your website or your landing page because um, the issue is CBR, conversion rate. And I cannot tell you how many times I have looked at an ad account and everything looks beautiful. The structure, the ads, the audiences, everything's perfect. The click-through rate is through the roof, the engagement's through the roof, but then they go to the, the site, they land on there, and boom, nothing happens. Guess what? Your website is not optimized for purchases, so your landing page doesn't have a clear message of what people need to do to take action. So this is when you gotta really study uh, you know, videos of people who land on your site. Uh, is it a, it, does it look like a trusted site? Do, is there a clear explanation of the product? Is the price on point with the rest of the market? If it's more expensive, why is it more expensive? You gotta explain that stuff. Do you, is it clear for people to contact you if they have any issues? Are there reviews all over the site from previous customers? These are all things that affect your conversion rate on your website. So uh, make sure you take the time to optimize your, web, your website or landing pages in order to get conversions. And you know, just to give you an idea, a decent conversion rate, uh, conversion, conversion rate on a web, on a, let's say a Shopify store should be 3% and up. A funnel can be, I don't, you know, if you're doing a funnel where you're doing lead generation, I wouldn't do anything that's less than than 16% or 20% on opt-ins uh, on a funnel. So make sure you take the time to work on your conversion rate when it comes to your websites, okay? Um, next, no two accounts are ever the same. What do I mean by that? No two Facebook ad accounts are ever the same. This is why you go on, on groups and people uh, put something on, it's like, oh my God, CBO's killing it for our account. And then you go in the same group and then somebody's posting, CBO's not working for me. That's because no two Facebook ad accounts are ever, ever the same. And what does that do? That takes us back to number one, which I already threw away over there. But testing, this is why you gotta test, test, test. Don't ever, 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 ever take the word from somebody who says, this is the only way to do things, and it, and, and it is because it works in my account and it should work on everybody else's account. That is not the case. Now, generic ideas might work, but little hacks and stuff like that, every ad account is, is completely different. And to tell you the truth, when it comes to like quote unquote hacks anymore, there's no little hacks anymore. It's about having a, a good brand, a good product, and that campaign structure that I showed you earlier. So. There's that, no two Facebook ad accounts are ever the same. And last but not least, use funnels to scale or whenever possible. Funnels are very powerful because funnels, when people land on a sales funnel on a landing page, it's a one way track to tell them what to do. There's no distractions of like, who are we? Our story, blah, blah, blah. It's straight up. Here's our product, buy it, quantity breaks, and then you can upsell, downsell, upsell, downsell. If it's a lead generation funnel, uh, you can tell them to take action exactly what you want. So every time, if you have the choice between using a Shopify store or a funnel, I recommend to use the funnel for, for the winning products to scale. You, you keep your Shopify store if you have a store, but you use uh, the winning product inside a funnel to scale it, to take it to the next level. And you know, for lead generation, definitely use a funnel. So I hope that helps. I hope this secret stash here of my little formula helps you guys on making decisions and takes you to the next level. And if you guys wanna keep learning about Facebook ads or digital marketing in general, check out one of the videos right above me and I will see you guys in the next video.